guys, it's Libby the developer and we are back. <laughs> Boy, have we come a long way from filming in the car. Oh, wow. Take a moment out to appreciate all of that. Um, I bought some new equipment for my YouTube channel. Now that we're at a thousand subscribers, I'm really feeling like I can do this YouTube thing. So you guys continue to subscribe and like and comment to give me the momentum to continue on. Anyway, to the video. So I am doing a video today discussing being an actual software engineer and why you should not do it if you have the following characteristics about yourself. This video is pivotal. I've been an engineer now for over a year and so I feel like I'm at the point in my career where I can definitely offer up solid uh, guidance and tips for you guys as far as what this lifestyle entails. So you'll see me reference my little book here. So go ahead, let's go ahead and go. So let's see, you should not become a software engineer if you have an ego. This is the type of field where you are constantly a novice. Even when you tackle one topic, you're going to be a novice again, over and over and over. That's how programming works. That's how technology works. There's always something new to learn. And so if you're looking to get into a field where you feel like at some point you're going to be an expert, do not get into this field because you never ever are. There are people that have been engineers for 10 plus years and they still get stumped on problems. I have senior principal software engineers that may come to me and ask me a question about something specifically in relation to some new something that's going on. For example, React is a newer framework for JavaScript. And so for someone who's been programming for 10 plus years, they may not know about different components and the difference between all these different ways that you can build on an app using the actual language. So they have to come to a junior software engineer to ask those questions. So you, if you have an ego at all, do not get into this field because you will never ever get to a point where you can sit on your high horse and say, oh yeah, I got this, I know everything. Point number two, you cannot be afraid of failure. You're constantly going to fail in your career. The whole point of this is to fail forward and to fail fast. You may get asked to create one little button and it takes you an entire week to do that. I can give you an example of me creating a split button for an app at my job. It took me an entire week to do it because it was a lot of different factors going on with the data and the database and how they wanted to actually function. And there were lots of bugs. Even when I did create the actual button and get it to function, guess what? That went to QA and I got a list of bugs back. And so yeah, that can be frustrating. So if you are not comfortable with failure, then do not get into this field because you are going to constantly fail. I am telling you. Third thing, if you're sensitive, you cannot be sensitive in this field. You will constantly get your feelings hurt. Developers are very opinionated people. You can come up with the solution to a problem, present that and get critiqued immensely because every developer is going to have their own special little way that they could have accomplished that same thing and every single developer thinks that their way is right trust me you can send in your pr and you know you're going to have a guaranteed you're going to have a comment from a senior developer that's like you should do this this way or even another developer at your same level that says well i would have done it that, that way and it's like great cool you would have done it that way but i feel like this is the best way to do this and once you get to a point in your career uh, a certain point in your career then you actually should stand up for your code and stand up for yourself that's one piece of uh, that's one thing that I learned I'll talk about code reviews towards the end of this but in your code review if you feel confident about something you should be able to stand behind your code and say no I did it this way and this is why 
Next thing, um, if you are not a self starter, you have to be the type of person to take initiative to find different ways to do certain things. It's very easy to tap the shoulder of the programmer next to you and ask them how they would do that, but you absolutely cannot go that route because everyone is busy working on that same thing. Guaranteed, when I come to another developer and ask them questions, I have done as much research as I can to then get to a point where I can ask very specific questions to that person. Not, hey, how do I find this a solution to this? You never ever wanna do that. You wanna be able to do all the research you can and then say, hey, I found a way to do this specific thing. What's your thoughts surrounding this? Or hey, I found a solution to do this one specific thing. I tried it out and the issue that I'm having is that once I iterate over the data, I'm not producing the correct index of the elements that I'm looking to return. Something very specific. You should never go to another developer and say, hey, how do you do this? No, there's way too much information online. Next thing, if you're not willing to put in the, in the work, do not become a developer. There are lots of developers that work late into the nights, work on the weekends, and that's because you have to. Some days at work, you're constantly, I mean, the entire day, you're purely researching. If you get a task, you may have to spend the entire day researching how to do that task and you're not coding at all. You have to remember, this is a position where you're getting paid a lot of money and so they expect you to deliver. And there's, there's a whole thing with work-life balance and yeah, you should definitely take that into consideration. But for me personally, I'm the type of person that like to feel comfortable with what I'm delivering. So as a junior software engineer, I feel like I need to put in the extra hours in order to compensate for the amount of time that it's gonna take for me to do this one thing that it would take another junior developer to do because I, um, it takes me a little bit longer to do things, okay? But that's just me. I get the job done and I figure it out. But like I always say, I am, you know, the type of developer that I have not been doing this since I was 10 years old, like a lot of these people. I work with PhDs. So, <laughs> you know, I have to make sure that I, I'm able to compete. Next thing. Um, if you're not good at researching, when it comes to finding solutions, you have to go into rabbit holes of researching and looking and finding and digging deep to find so help for fi finding the answer to this one specific thing that you're trying to do, this feature you're creating, this bug you're trying to fix. It takes a ton of research and there should actually probably be a class on Google searching for developers. You know, I had a huge question before I became a professional developer. And that question was, do other developers Google? And yes, we Google all day, every day. And so you got, you have to learn how to get really good at Googling and understanding Stack Overflow and how that works. Let's see, the next thing is you're never an expert. I talked about that before. Don't ever expect to be an expert in this field because you're never going to be. You can talk to any developer and they will tell you that same exact thing. Next thing, if you're not able to grasp concepts fast, that is very important because technology is a, it's a very fast moving industry. And so you have to be able to figure things out kind of on the fly. And for someone like me, who again, it takes me maybe a little bit longer, I've gotten really good at taking notes. Whenever I sit down with my boss, he or or any other developer a lot of times they assume that you know so many things so what i do is i have my notepad and pen everywhere i go or my computer and i just type down the words that they're saying i type down everything whatever they're saying i just type it down and then once i get back to my table then i can go through and research what the heck what's was this word that they said you know whatever the case may be and that circles back to understanding how to research so if you're not the type of person that can just pick up things on the fly you need to be the type of person that's great at taking notes and the type of person that can research well and figure out um, these different things and you have to be able to understand it once you research it as well Another thing, you cannot be the type of person that gets easily distracted. When it comes to programming, you have to laser focus in on the thing that you're doing. And there's a 
a lot a lot of times there's a lot of different distractions from like the chat group and you know obviously if you're working in an office and people talking here and there you have to be able to zone in on exactly what it is that you're doing and be able to and because that's the only way that you're going to get the job done is if you laser focus so if you're easily distracted if you're not able to focus this is not the industry for you i put my uh, headphones on and i just zone into what i'm doing um if you're not open for growth this is not industry the industry for you, you this is a continued learning field so you have to be open to always learning always figuring out the newest latest programming language always figuring out different conferences and groups to attend so yet yeah, you're constantly building your uh, your repository of information in your brain you cannot stay stuck in in the things that you have always known to be true you have to be willing to grow and and continue to move with the pace of the industry and the very last tip that I have is that you have to be able to take critiques. Like I said before, you're constantly going to be critiqued. Your code could be absolutely perfect and someone's going to find another, you know, something wrong with that. And as engineers, software engineers, you have code reviews most times where you quite literally go into a room and you have a group of people, you project your code on the screen and they sit there and the literal goal of this meeting is to critique every line of code on the screen and so if you are not open to critiques this is not the entry for you again this goes back to being sensitive you cannot have any egos in this that's really the bigger picture with all of this i can remember specifically one time where i had a line of code and the line of code was maybe like eight words and so i had another developer come and say okay well you can make this shorter make it into you know whatever four words so i was able to cut down the line of code to four words and then he's like all right yeah no this can be refactored even more um yeah because that's what he was saying before refactor it continue to refactor and then it was okay well refactor from the four um words of code in this one line of code and you know his whole thing was he wanted me to get it to one word for the line of code. I don't know if I explained that correctly. I was able to get it down to one, but you know, it was like, what for? Like it accomplishes the same thing. Anyway, y'all, that's my list. It was super hyper because I had my iced coffee this morning. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Please be sure to subscribe, like, and comment down below, and I will be back with some more fire videos. Bye.